Huh. There we go. There's the first clip gone. Bling! All right, we're back. I went ahead and removed the cluster from the old 300 SD. I've got a little bit of, uh, well, restorative work to do today. And, oh, by the way, don't mind the loud heater in the background because I'm toasty warm and I don't mind it. Now, our cluster here has the typical speckle disease or dot disease or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I watched another YouTube video recently where a gentleman, I believe in New Zealand or Australia, one or the other, put these things underneath his microscope and just and basically noted that they were sprouting from within the paint. It's, it was pretty interesting, really. So the brown is a primer of sorts, I am assuming, underneath, and it is degrading or oxidizing in some manner and it is poking through the top layer of paint. If we get down here and just really eyeball this, I can tell up close that it, it looks like a growth. It's really bizarre. It looks like the spots are simply sprouting from within the paint. It, it's really strange. I don't know that I've ever seen another paint deterioration uh, feature or manifestation like this before. This is the only place I've ever seen this happen. It seems to be pretty much everywhere on the on the framework itself, but I can look in the gauges and I can see remnants of it. I can see it's happening very, very slightly on the lines and the numbers and, and whatnot, but I'm not going to be able to do anything about that. But what I can do is take the shell out of here, go ahead and sand it down, reprime it, repaint it with some good satin paint that is made for plastic. We'll go with a nice uh, satin black, and then we'll apply this apricot color over the needles. And I think you can tell that's gonna work out pretty nice. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can disassemble this cluster and bring it back to its original glory. I'm basically just going to start taking screws out until this thing falls apart. That sounds like a pretty good plan to me. temperature sensor or temperature readout rather been a while since I've had this thing apart how hard could it be really there we go such a noble design how did that go again I think we're going to replace these white LEDs with uh, amber colored LEDs while we are at it. The speedometer and the odometer and all that stuff works perfectly by the way. Um, there's not much I can do here. The only thing we're going to do here is paint this needle. So we'll set this out of the way. All right, there's our tack and our clock. And the clock barely works, so now that I've reminded myself, this project may turn out to be a little longer than I thought because apparently the capacitors in this clock are a known failure point, so we may just go ahead and do that while we're in here. I think I have to take this screw out right here. It's been it's been a while since I was in here, you know? It's not making that up. It's been a while. 
or as some people say, it's been a minute. All right, there's the temp gauge and the uh, fuel and the uh, oil. All right, here's the cam and the wheel for the knob to reset the uh, triple meter. Now, how do you get this off? As usual, it was something you've never done before, uh, and you're wanting to be extremely careful because 38-year-old plastic is very, very brittle. I'm gonna poke around for a little bit and see what the best way will be to disconnect them. I seem to, this one on the corner seems, snap! You know, it's, it's gonna be like that, really. If I get away with not break it without breaking something, I will be thoroughly impressed. This felt material, I'm assuming, is what holds the, uh, the binnacle in place and provides the firm fit that you feel when you remove it from the car. Knowing my luck, there's a screw underneath there. Nope, nothing underneath there. That was a futile endeavor. Let's just take it off because my curiosity won't be satisfied unless I do it. All right, I'm making a little bit of progress here. You got these little clips here, here, and there's one over there. And I'm just being really, really, really cautious to just pull that tab up just a little bit and then put a screwdriver in there and just twist a little bit. Careful. Get some of this glue and felt out of the way. Looks like I'll be making another trip over to Hobby Lobby and uh, pick up some, some strips of felt and we'll find a suitable adhesive to uh, redo what we've torn off. I should have known this wouldn't be this easy. You know, if it was this easy, everybody on the planet would be repainting their instrument cluster. I may just break out a hammer here in a minute. All right, so there's another one here underneath this felt. See, you don't know what you don't know. If it's covered up, have you ever taken a Mercedes instrument cluster apart before to this level. No, I have not. Looks like it's a mixture of gluing, taping, and welding to hold this thing together. All right, we got underneath that one. We've got to crack this loose. There we go. There we go. There we go. It's, uh, we're cracking open the glue and uh, all the while, you know, trying to prevent ourselves from um, destroying the cluster. Now we've got to work our way down this way. Well, how many small flat blade screwdrivers does he have anyway? got enough to do the job, buddy. Yeah, that's pretty tight right there. I'm not too sure about that. There's a... There's some glue right there. We've got to get that off. See, there's squeeze out right there. There's... There's sealant right here. Huh. There we go. There's the first clip. Gone. Bling! Got a little overzealous. But uh, I'm thinking it just won't matter. So anyway, let's let's move on, shall we? I guess I'm being too nice to it, really. I kept thinking, oh, I can preserve that 40-year-old felt. <sighs> that was pretty stupid. Let's see if we can break that one too. I heard a crack. Over two, maybe. All right, it's the next day. Nice, beautiful Saturday morning. And I decided to go with a little bit of heat. And we will use that in conjunction with a hot razor to separate the two halves of this cluster. It's apparent that uh, 
the factory used some sort of sealant here, uh, some sort of adhesive on either end here. It's, it's stuck pretty solid. Uh, on the middle section here, I was able to uh, just gently pry it loose, and that this part seems to be loose. I think on the ends, it's solidly adhered with uh, some, some form of, of fairly strong adhesive. So that is the immediate plan. We're going to go with heat next. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get busy. Oh, man, that's pretty nice there. Yeah, that was a good decision. All right, so this is gonna take me quite some time. So I'm going to slowly heat this junction here and try to peel it away. So that's probably gonna take me a better part of an hour if I had to take a rough estimate. So. We'll be back with you here in just a little while. All right, we're gonna show you a little progress here. Now, this is not pretty. This is, this is fairly ugly, so keep that in mind. I've been taking the hot knife and slipping it down in between this crease between the outer bezel and the, the framework or the housing, whatever you wanna call it, uh, a little bit at a time and just easing my way down through there. And I've gotten it loose up to about right there. So if you take the universal tool and slip in there and just give it a little tweak, you can see that it's loose. So my next goal is to do the same thing up through this end here. All right, that worked out pretty well. Got the uh, screwdriver in there and you can see we've tweaked it a little bit there. And uh, basically all I'm doing again is I'm getting the hot knife, the hot razor, and just easing it down in here real gentle like. The heat makes the adhesive dissolve anyway, but once we get that gap wide enough to get something in there to just get a little twisting action, then we can start to uh, make it release. I think up next, the last bit on this end will be down here at the corner. All right, we've got the corner piece uh, disconnected here around this corner. Again, we just slipped our hot knife through there and uh, we just eased it up. So we've got that, we've got that loose now. Okay, well, it's off to the other end to get it loose. All right, I think I've got this thing loose all the way around now. Now I just have to be real careful and try to find the spots where it's still sticking and then gently pry it loose. I've got the, uh, the junction there loosened all the way around the unit. So, all right, let's see if we can get this thing separated without breaking it. Just taking this thing apart is half the battle. Actually, it's 90% of the battle, I think. Let's see what we have here. So we've got, that comes up. Actually, that's looking pretty good. You know, we got stuff in here that's delicate, right? You got these symbols uh, for your lights and your brake and your glow and seat belts and whatnot. Want to be careful. We don't want to damage that stuff. What is that hanging on? Let's go down here. Just shove it in there. It'll be okay. Careful. I can see why there's no videos of this on YouTube. What is that hanging on? Let's see. Let's see what we have here. And we're free there. Oh, look at that. That uh, fell out. Uh-oh. Got to be careful. That's delicate. All right. So let me put this over here out of the way. Set it on the shop keyboard. I bet you guys saw that on the video. Go, Look at that dummy, it fell out. You just want to be, you know, slow, right? You don't want to... Plastic is... I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already... You hear, you hear that? Click! <laughs> That's your disconcerting sound that you don't want to hear. But in this case, I think it's simply this bezel releasing. All right, well, I'll battle this for a little while longer. I'll be right back. All right, we just had a few places where the plastic had not let loose just yet. A few strands. And we, look at that, look at that, look at that. On video, even first time. Man, look at that. Okay. Well, we got that off. Our little uh, lamp translucent uh, 
seat belt thing fell out. So let's put that over there. Okay, so here is the outer piece with the clear plastic lens. Uh, this piece here will be uh, sanded down and painted as well. Uh, clearly, this lens will need to come out to do that as well as this lens here. We may have to take that one out as well, but we will figure that out in a little while. We won't worry about that just yet. Our main task is to eliminate this mess up inside here. The dot disease or the, let's see, see it just, you rub your finger on it, it's, it's clearly oxidation of the primer coat beneath the uh, top coat. Or it could be oxidation of the plastic itself, one or the other, not sure which. But I think it's pretty clear that with this white haze here, when you rub it, that that's a sign of oxidation. Uh, the car probably spent most of its years in a carport, I think, as opposed to a garage. If it had been inside, I don't think it would have seen this problem. The question remains, how do we work on this? We still have these lenses here for the blinkers. I'm gonna poke around a little bit and see if I can't find a way to remove this from the housing. Uh, because I, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm probably gonna use uh, baking soda blasting to clean this up. Because there's too many fine curves and ledges and stuff. You couldn't just get in here with sandpaper and stuff. It's gotta be soda blasted. That's, you, you know, you see this, this ridge right here? There's just too much stuff here. So we, I think a soda blast is, is the way to go. All right, we've got the central housing removed. Upon my initial observation, it looked like this area was actually an insert uh, into this housing, but it's not. It looks like an insert, but it's not. You know, things are just, they just don't seem apparent until you just really start digging in there and just examining everything just really closely, you know, to see what you're really, really dealing with here. You've got the, the green lenses for the blinkers and you have, they're sort of fiber optic, not really, but it's just a big piece of plastic and it transfer the, transfers the light from the bulb, which is here, through this plastic piece and it comes out you guys know this already, but it comes out right here. The light comes out and it shoots light onto the, uh, the front of the gauges. The original incandescent bulb melted this and made it bubble up. I'm wondering what I can do with that, if anything, because you'd think that the, the light transference through this is gonna be distorted because of the bubbles and the amber color where it got hot. So it makes me wonder if maybe I can take a little polishing compound, at least maybe I can remove the amber color from the heat over the years. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is try to remove these blinker uh, lenses. Uh, it looks like there are some places where plastic was simply melted uh, and overhangs, and that is what holds the lens in place. So I'm gonna get a, a needle or something down in there and clip that little bit of plastic that's holding that lens in place, and then we'll go ahead and get those lenses removed. All right, I got the two little blinker lenses removed, and I just used a little pick tool to remove that little bit of plastic that was holding them down. And up next, need to figure out a way to loosen this and get it out of our way. I started messing with it earlier might be just a press fit, might be a little bit of adhesive in there. No, I didn't break it, that was just the sound of it releasing. <laughs> Sounded like it was breaking though, didn't it? Slow and gentle, that's how you do it with plastic stuff. You can't go fast. I'm still trying to figure out if this is all one piece. Oh, you know what, nope, hold up. I think I just figured something out. This piece right here, where the fiber optic light comes out, this is an add-on. This, this is not part of this mold. It looks like it is adhered 
uh, with these holes here on the back side with this adhesive poking through these holes here. So I'm thinking if we sand that off, that should release this little piece right here. And I think I'm gonna do that because you just can't get in here and work on this thing with all this crap in your way, you know? You need to get up in there and besides, it's a fun investigation. Let's carry on, shall we? All right, teardown continues. I'm gonna use a little Dremel tool and uh, disconnect these. All right, I used the uh, Dremel tool to uh, dig in here and remove that plastic uh, dowel rod or whatever it was. Um, and uh, I bored that out there and there. I haven't done the rest of them yet, but I just wanted to show you the progress. We've loosened this thing up, right? So, right, you can see what I'm doing? So this, this that's gotta come out of there before we can continue on with the project. So let me go ahead and uh, bore these two out. We'll get this little piece out of here. Oh, there's one in the middle. Forgot about that. I'm trying to remove as little material as a possible. There we go. Come on off of there. That's the way. That's what that looks like. All right. Dot disease and all. So this is like a, sort of a shroud, I guess, over the uh, fiber optic deal that uh, sends the light down over the gauges. And you can see where it had basically, I guess it was tantamount to, uh, they're basically just plastic rivets through these holes here. And uh, I'll just get that plastic out of those holes. And when we reinstall it, hopefully, I guess we'll retain enough of this. Like that nub right there will be used for placement and that one too. But the others are, have broken off. But uh, we'll just use our old friend JB Weld to... Uh, reattach it. I don't think we'll have any problem with that. The next piece of the puzzle, I believe, is to find a way to remove this. I've got these two points loosened, and I believe we have some adhesive underneath these two tabs. So I'm going to try to release that next. All right, various means here. Uh, I've got a hot knife, and I also used my new fangled uh, torch here to heat up the tip of this tiny screwdriver and then bend it in the vise, and it makes an excellent small pry bar. Um, to disconnect these things, uh, there's just a little plastic rivet here. You just pop it loose, no big deal. However, there's a fair amount of adhesive underneath this tab here and here, and with a hot razor, you can slip in here and uh, make it release, and then you can use your little screwdriver there, your modified screwdriver, and and pry it loose. So we've got that loose. Now I'm going to gently see if I can't remove this from the housing. Glued to that. There, there we go. It finally released. Just that last little bit there. What do we got? Something down here on the end. Let's see. Come on. Careful. There we go. There we go. Okay, that's your fiber optic doohickey. Ah, now, you see, you just don't understand what you're looking at until you take it apart. This is just a white plastic cover over this uh, clear piece of plastic that is used to transmit the uh, illumination to your front of your gauges. The source is here, it comes up through there like a fiber optic and is 
distributed across this surface here. I suppose one could probably remove that and then take this and just polish the heck out of it and try to optimize the amount of light that you get to your gauges. And uh, during all of this, I think I'm going to try to do something about this. Surely this is affecting the ability of the light to, you know, transmit. So, all right, we'll worry about that at a later date. So let's set this aside. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this one off camera. All right, there you are, folks, all torn down. We got everything disconnected from the internal housing of this instrument cluster. And I think we're ready to start cleaning it up. Need to strategize just a little bit about how we're gonna go about this. This plastic right here looks really good. That's where the lenses covered up this section right here. That means that the light did not get a chance to come in there and oxidize the plastic. That's what, that's what that means. These were covered up with the lenses and you can see that this plastic is in perfect condition and that lens filters out a lot of the light, right? It only shows you red or green or whatever the color of the illumination is. So it filters out a lot of the, uh, the light. So that is the reason why that looks good and this does not. I think we figured that out. How about that? So up next, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare our soda blaster. Uh, and it's been a while since I used it, so I'm probably going to go clean it and fiddle with it for a little while to uh, make sure it works properly. And then we'll, uh, we're going to clean this thing up. I taped up this area here that I didn't want to blast, and uh, everything else is fair game, however. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just hit this area right here and just see what that does before we go, you know, hog wild, right? This uh, El Cheapo Media Blaster requires a little agitation once in a while, or actually all the time, to make it function. I think that's going to do real nice. And we're blasting with baking soda here, so it's real benign stuff, right? Time to get after it. I think I'm going to hit this really rough area right here first, see what that does. I think we chose the uh, the right method for this, so I think this is going to work out really well. So, all right, well, time to go hog wild, I guess. I think we did a pretty good job here, folks. Uh, I've got this all soda blasted, and that is what the, uh, the bare surface is looking like. I suppose in some areas you could see some vague remnants of the um, deterioration of the plastic. Initially, I thought this was a, um, an issue with their, where there was a primer underneath and the primer uh, was deteriorated and poking through the surface. But when I soda blasted this, this is just black plastic. There is no other coating beneath, to my knowledge. This white coating here looks like it was added later. I could be wrong, though. Uh, there is this one spot where it looks like something was dripped there. Maybe something melted at some point in the past, but the soda blasting won't get that off, so I'm going to hit that real quick with some 220. There's a drip of some sort there. That's kind of weird. I'm not sure where that came from. Yeah, there we go, got it knocked out. Okay, so, and you can see it's just black plastic. There's nothing 
beneath it. Where does that lead us? In our investigation, there is there's nothing beneath that. That's just black ABS plastic. I guess it's ABS. So where did the brown dots come from? Well, that leads me back to another theory, I guess, which some folks might think it's some sort of growth, right? Some sort of mold or, fun or fungus. It's really bizarre. I don't know what it was. You know, it looked crystalline and it was brown, which was weird. But I'm not going to ponder on it any longer. The soda blasting seems to have done a really good job. So up next, I'm going to go ahead and just give this a good washing with some soap and water, and then we'll get ready for paint. All right, we've got the heater going over there again. Uh, I've got the uh, cluster sitting over there drying after I washed it. Now we have the lens, and we're going to have to take care of this thing as well. It's affected by the same uh, malady as the other piece, but not nearly as badly. Next thing on the agenda here is to remove this lens without breaking it. It's already disconnected right there, and that was probably a source of a rattle. <laughs> um, this may not be that bad, he says, as he proceeds to break it clean in half. All right, let me uh, thoroughly examine this thing, and I'll get back to you. All right, we're going to run a uh, tack rag over this thing, and get rid of the uh, dust and any remnants of um, trash that we don't want in our paint job. I just gave it a thorough rinsing with the uh, water hose. Or as they say in Alabama, the hose pop. The hose pop is connected to the spigot in Alabama. You guys have a water hose or a hose pop? It's looking pretty good. I don't know why I'm being so picky. Anything we do to this thing would look better than the way it was. I could leave it like this and it would look better than the way it was. So, you know what? <laughs> it's all about perspective, folks. You know, do you want to be a perfectionist? Well, okay. If that's, then send your car off to Mercedes Benz and give them a million dollars and tell them to make it perfect. Otherwise, you know, just do the best you can within your means. All right, I think that is about it. This piece is ready for some Krylon satin black. All right, folks, I think I'm gonna wrap this video up and uh, call this part one of our instrument cluster uh, restoration. So we've got the main housing here, uh, all media blasted or uh, soda blasted, I guess you might say. And uh, I came in here with some Krylon uh, satin black and gave it uh, three coats there. It looks pretty good. Um, it's not quite dry yet. It's still a little shimmery and I'm trying to figure out whether or not I'm gonna have a run or not. I don't think I am, but you know, it looks pretty good. I, like I said earlier, anything we do to this thing will be way, way, way better than the way it was, okay? So let's... Let's try to maintain some perspective here. So I think you'll agree that uh, <laughs> it looks way, way better than it did. So let's move on over here and talk about this piece for a moment. Now this one's gonna be kind of tricky. Gotta figure out how to get that lens out of there or I might leave it in place. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do just yet, but I've gotta sand down this piece and give it a paint job as well. And then when we uh, put it all back together, we'll have to use some adhesive to make sure the lens is uh, adhered to the framework and all that. Also, we have these uh, fiber optic, for lack of a better word, I don't know what you call them really. I need to clean this up a little bit, so that's gonna be in the next video as well. And we need to clean up these needles. I've got some paint for that. We're gonna paint those in the next video. So in the next video, you'll see the renovation of this piece. Uh, the needles on the gauges, and we'll try to clean these guys up as best we can. We'll probably get to the reassembly of the whole thing, but we'll see what happens. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, almost forgot, we got the super bright LEDs, and I might add, it says for off-road use only, which is whatever. We have this little piece right here. I still have to get to this one as well, so I'll need to soda blast it and go through the whole nine yards and uh, paint it with satin black as well. So all in all, we've got quite a bit of work left to do. 
All right, folks, that's all for now. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one, and remember to enjoy restoring your classic Mercedes.